Hello and welcome back. This is the third part and probably the final part in this series using an outside bar entry. We're looking at dollar yen with the four hour chart. Now, if you've been watching the previous parts, then you would have seen last time we looked at the stop and the profit levels. We optimized them and the results were still bad, even with the kind of best stable areas. So then we tried to change the exit and make it into like a day trading strategy, put a timed exit on the end of it. But unfortunately, results were still bad. This time, let's go over to the computer. We're gonna take that end of day exit and continue with that, start having a look at the trade times, the, the time windows where we can trade that. Hopefully, well, maybe even introduce some other filters. Hopefully at the end of it, we get something that's gonna work well. And then I want to look at some out of sample data. So take our strategy that hopefully looks good and add it to some out of sample data. Look at a couple of years worth of data that wasn't used within the development just to see how it would have worked on that future data. So let's go to the computer now and start the development. Okay, we're back again, but now we've got an exit on the close of the day. So we've swapped to a time exit. We've still got the, the stop and the profit as well, but essentially we've got that exit on close. And we're gonna have a look at the start trade. We're still using that same 150 pip stop, 350 pip profit. We've got an end time of 2400, so let's trade all day. And we're gonna look at what's a good time to start the trading. And here's the results. Very quickly we can see that these are the results are the best. Still negative, still bad, but they're, they're the best. So let's try and let's have a look at what using a start time of 200 is like. And it's still bad, unfortunately. It's, I really get the feeling that we're possibly wasting time here carrying on because we should, we should have seen some promise much earlier on with this. The only thing that has improved it, now I've already done these tests, uh, I haven't actually recorded them, but I have actually added a couple of additional filters and we'll look at the results to see how, what changes to the results that those made. For these additional filters, what we need to see, for long trades, we need to see that the high of the day so far has already exceeded the high of the previous day. So we're already showing a bit of strength and only if we see that then we go long and the opposite is for short. If today's low has been below the low of yesterday then we, we are allowed to go short. And I've tested a few different similar style type strength or weakness type strategies and only these only these two have actually worked which actually kind of raises a bit of a flag normally if a type of strength or weakness filter if one works they should all really work but nonetheless let's carry on and have a look at the results using these filters and here's the equity curve now i will add that we're back to trading multiple days now we're, we're not looking at the exit on close but straight away you can see now we've finally got something that's moving in the right direction so that's good and the next step is obviously to look at that time window the trade time we'll have a look to see where the optimal time window is to trade and i have actually gone ahead and done both the optimizations for the best start time and the best end time and I came out with starting trading at, at 2 a.m. and finishing taking trades at 10 a.m. I haven't shown you them here, but you've seen me go through that process before. So, and here's the equity curve using those best start and end times. And we're finally getting something that looks reasonable, something that's uh, usable. And interestingly, I actually tested the end of day exit as well just simply switching to an end of day exit um, also produces pretty good results. So that's quite pleasing. So at the moment, it looks like we've got a reasonable strategy. So next, the 
thing I normally like to do is, I uh, mentioned it before, is look at the out of sample data. What we do is we'll add an additional two years worth of data. So instead of going from 2008 through to the end of 2016, we're going to go from 2008 through to the end of 2018 now to see what those two years worth of data, how the performance looks on those. And here's the equity curve with those additional two years of out of sample data. We can see that the out of sample data literally started from about where my cursor is now from the start of 2017 onwards. So uh, we, let's zoom in and that literally is the two years worth of out of sample data, the forward data that we didn't use. So to had we been happy with that strategy, with the inputs, and we're happy to start trading, if we'd have start trading, this is what would have happened. We would have just lost money the whole way. And that concludes the results for this test with this outside bar strategy on dollar yen. What we ended up with, once we added those additional filters and we used the multi-day exit with stop and profit, we ended up with a curve, an equity curve that looked reasonable. It looked something half promising. Then we went ahead and checked some out of sample data in which the results just fell apart. They were awful. Now, that's just a typical sign of something that was over-optimized or curve-fitted. We used that in-sample data and somehow manipulated the numbers uh, and just by fluke that they happened to work quite well within that in-sample data period. But then we looked at some future data that wasn't in the sample, some out-of-sample data, and the results just fell apart. The strategy didn't work. It didn't make money. Now, there were some flags early on that this could have been the case. First of all, typically when a strategy is going to work with no filters, no optimizing of any stop loss or anything like that, some like the sort of the base inputs, the base parameters, the strategy tends to have some sort of promise from word go. This one, if you remember, it didn't. It looked awful from the word go, even when we looked at a time window, adjusted the stop and profit, it just carried on looking awful. It just didn't really work. Then I found some daily filters that that worked quite well. They looked quite good in the tests. I actually checked some other trend type daily filters, very similar filters to the ones I used, but they didn't work. So that was another flag to me. If a type of filter is going to work, then Generally, other types of the same kind work also. So that was another flag, and I'm really not surprised that this didn't work in out of sample. Which leaves me to conclude that this strategy that was found on a forum that uses that four hour bar above or below the exponential moving average, the outside bar, it makes me wonder if it, if it has an edge whatsoever. Personally, I don't think so. I could go on and test some other pairs with this because not all strategies work on every Forex pair. I know that. But I just get the feeling that it's just not, not particularly good. If you remember, we looked at periods in the equity graph from over the years, and there were years where it worked really well, years where it worked really badly. Now, somebody who th might have brought the attention to this strategy may have looked at these periods where it just happened to work well and thought yeah that, this is obviously a great way to enter the market but we've seen that over a broader amount of years it probably really doesn't work so what do you think about that leave some comments or questions down below tell me what you think uh, tell me if you've had success with this type of strategy if there's any other strategies you'd like me to test or try and improve, look at, then leave them in the comments down below or email me, jared at thetransparenttrader.com and I'll see you in the next videos. It might be another series like this or just your normal tips and training type videos. So until then, see you later.